Welcome back to another Gaming on Linux video. In the last video, I looked at how AMD plus Linux performed against AMD plus Windows. And to be honest, the results were quite surprising with AMD's 6650 XT having a comfortable, I would say 8% better performance on Linux compared to Windows and even more significantly better 1% lows than on Windows. So it really did surprise me. And it did beg the question, what would be the situation with NVIDIA? Now we've heard a lot about AMD's open source Mesa drivers. And I've heard some negative things about the closed source NVIDIA drivers. So I think it was definitely worth putting it to the test to see was the NVIDIA situation as bad as I'd heard, or maybe it was a bit closer to AMD than than I'd heard before. So it was definitely worth putting that to the test. Now I chose a 3060 Ti to, because it's more or less in the same bracket of performance as the 6650 XT. It's more or less from the same generation of graphics cards. So I think it was a fair comparison to put them, not necessarily head to head because a 3060 Ti is 10 to 15% better in terms of performance, but that they're from the same generation more or less and that they're fairly comparable cards. They would be entry level to mid range cards. So what I did was again, just like in the last video, and I definitely recommend looking at that video if you want to see the head to heads um, between Linux and Windows in the various games, there was 15 games in total. If you want to see those and you want to see all the charts specific to the 6650 XT on both Linux and Windows, it's definitely worth looking at that video. And I will link to that video in the description. And you know, you can always go to my channel, you can subscribe and you can look at that video as well as this video and all my future Linux on gaming videos. So what are we testing? We're testing again, 15 games. We're going to do all the usual benchmarks. I'm going to present side by side comparison videos with all of the, the usual telemetry. I'm using Afterburner on Windows and Mango HUD on Linux. So you'll see all the FPS, you'll see the frame times, the averages, the, the CPU usage, the power usage on the GPU and the percentages, all that kind of stuff is going to be visible. Um, after that's played for each game, I'll introduce a chart showing how the 3060 Ti performed. And then immediately after that, we'll have a, a recap of how the 6650 XT performed in that game, assuming that there's a comparable uh, performance that we can look at. So that's the, the methodology. Um, once we've looked at all the 15 games, we'll then move to the summaries. We look at uh, the overall average FPS and the 1% lows for the 3060 Ti. And then we look at the same for the for AMD's 6650 XT and we'll We'll, we'll make some kind of a judgment at the end about whether it's worth gaming with uh, NVIDIA on Linux or whether AMD, as it, as it proved in the last video, was, was very very much the, the better option in, in a lot of games compared to uh, doing so on Windows. So is it the same on uh, Linux for NVIDIA or is there a worse, worse situation? We're going to find out. So um, again, I'm pairing the GPU with a Ryzen 5 5600. So again, it's an entry to mid-range uh, CPU from a couple of years back, you know, maybe three years ago, this would have been considered the mid-range. Um, now you're talking about something like a 7600 or a 7700 being kind of the mid-range. But I think it's a fair comparison because, um, you know, we're, we're pairing like for like a similar CPU, uh, entry-level CPU with a similar kind of entry-level GPU and we're, we're going to be basically stressing these components um, because a lot of modern games are very CPU and GPU intensive. So it could help us highlight bottlenecks and where the kind of pinch points are. So along with that, uh, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 CL16-3200 memory, and we're running this on the Bazite version of Linux. Now I'm going to do future videos um, in, in quite the short term really, I'm going to do a video on what Bazite is, why it might be the best choice for that kind of entry level or intermediate Linux user. It, it does give the best kind of, I think, console like experience. It definitely gives a Steam Deck like experience and it gives you that kind of 
comfort level that you don't have to tinker too much under the hood like you might with a lot of uh, Linux distros. It, it, it comes prepared for gaming. It has Steam, it has Heroic Game Launcher, Lutris. Um, it, it, it's basically ready to go. And all of the updates are very straightforward. You just treat it like a console. Every so often there'll be a major update and basically you don't have to worry too much about it. Um, you can still tinker around with it if you want, but there may be other distros that I will cover definitely in the future um, that might be better suited to the more technical among you. So so anyway, I will cover more about Bazite. I'll cover more about other distros, how they perform on, uh, in, in terms of gaming and other uses and a lot of that uh, content is to come. So definitely worth subscribing to make sure that when that content drops, you will get your notification. But anyway, that's uh, that's enough for the preamble to the, the benchmarks. And I know that's what most of you are here for. You're here for the side by sides. You're here for the, the, the charts and so on. So with that, let's go ahead and move into the benchmarks. In the well-optimized Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, the 3060 Ti offers excellent frame rates, though Windows 11 edges it on the overall average FPS. With the 6650 XT, however, Linux won out by about 13%. Black Myth Wukong is tough on CPU and GPU, and here we see Windows 11 winning comfortably on the overall average with the 3060 Ti, but more significantly on the 1% lows. With AMD's 6650 XT though, Linux was about 14% ahead. Cyberpunk 2077 is very playable on both OS's using the 3060 Ti, but Windows wins out by about 14% at 1080p and more comfortably at 1440p. The 6650 XT saw virtual parity between Linux and Windows 11. Windows has a comfortable victory in Space Marine 2, though Linux does offer a smooth experience with relatively good 1% lows compared to its average FPS. However, Linux won out by about 6% using the 6650 XT. Baldur's Gate 3 hands Windows 11 one of its more significant wins, with Linux performing about one third worse. AMD's 6650 XT allows Linux to edge out a slight victory here. Yo, you sounded stressed earlier. You doing okay? Yeah, there's just a lot going on, and I'm hungry, and the vending machine only has those plain low sodium table crackers. Spider-Man 2 on Windows 11 does offer the higher average FPS, though this is another title where Linux is relatively smoother. But Linux obliterates Windows 11 when using the 6650 XT.
Horizon Forbidden West gives Windows yet another reasonably comfortable win, though Linux is still very playable at these settings. The situation is better for Linux on the 6650 XT, however, eking out a slight win over Windows 11. Counter-Strike 2 offers 1440p high refresh gameplay on both OS's, though Windows edges it on Linux here. The Witcher 3 gives Windows 11 a noticeable win here, but this is another game with Linux offering a slightly smoother experience. With the 6650 XT, there was little to choose between Linux and Windows 11. It would have been quite depressing if we didn't see at least one win for Linux using the 3060 Ti and Rise of the Tomb Raider provides that win. The 6650 XT won out on Linux over Windows, particularly in terms of smoothness. Helldivers 2 would be difficult to provide an apples to apples benchmark for, so instead I am showing sample 1440p high preset graphics footage using quality level upscaling. Both offer a good experience with Windows edging it overall. My experience on Windows with the 6650 XT was a very stuttery one however. Four final games that I benchmarked on the 3060 Ti. In The Last of Us Part 1, another decent win for Windows 11. With the 6650 XT, there was a slight win for Linux. Doom 2016 I tested using Vulkan on the 3060 Ti, and while a high refresh rate is possible in both Windows and Linux, Windows edges it overall. In Alan Wake 2, Windows provides the much smoother experience with the 3060 Ti, while the 6650 XT provides a mirror image with a less stuttery experience on Linux. Finally, in the notoriously stuttery Silent Hill 2, we see significantly better performance on Windows for the 3060 Ti, while the opposite is true with the 6650 XT. Moving on now to the overall averages for the RTX 3060 Ti, we see an average of 96.5 frames per second at 1080p and 84.8 at 1440p, and we see that Linux was around 15% worse on average, and slightly worse again in the 1% lows. Looking now at the RX 6650 XT, we see that it had a modest, though not insignificant, win in Linux over Windows 11 with around 8% better average FPS but very very significantly better 1% lows. Okay so that was I think very interesting. I think I think to be honest while I was surprised at how good AMD was on Linux I was actually quite shocked with how poor Nvidia did on Linux. I, 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 I'll be honest I knew there were issues. I knew the closed source drivers had their had their issues that that, that had been I've I've read up on that. Um I uh, to be honest I was I was quite shocked. I didn't expect the performance to be the way it is. Now as usual the grains of salt the the caveats that it's this platform. It's these are results are for a 3060 Ti paired with a 5600 using Bazite and using Windows 11. 
um, with all of the updates, with all of the latest drivers and chipset drivers, all that kind of stuff, um, all up to date. So basically, best case scenario versus best case scenario. And what I came out with was, was that set of results. And it was very poor. Um, it's like the 3060 Ti on Linux represents a whole downgrade in terms of tier. It's, it's like the difference between, let's say, a 3060 and a 3070. That's kind of the performance you seem to be giving up. Um, when you're talking with 15%, that that's moving up a tier uh, on a graphics card. It's it, it could be a hundred, two hundred dollars in in difference when you're talking about graphics cards these days. And we know the the situation we face these days with graphics cards. So you don't want to be giving up that much performance. So I do have a lot more testing to do. Um, I am going to test older Nvidia and AMD graphics cards as well as newer ones. I'm going to test the RX 580. I'm going to text, test a GTX 1080. Um, so that, that those are two cards from kind of 2016 or 17. That should be a good comparison. I'm also going to test a 4080 Super versus a 9070 or 9070 XT, whichever one I get. Because I think that on, a, on Linux, they could end up being quite comparable, despite the fact that I reckon the 9070 XT is going to be quite a lot less expensive than what a 4080 Super was. And if they come out equal, or maybe even a, a slight victory for AMD's 9070 XT, that could be a very interesting result. And it might, it might be the kind of catalyst that makes some people think about moving to, to Linux. Um, because you can get the best of both worlds, you can dual boot, you can have both Linux and Windows on the same machine. So if you get your two terabyte or four terabyte SSD and you put it in there and you split it up however you want to split it up, maybe you get a four gigabyte drive, you put three towards Linux and one towards Windows just for those few games that are problematic, like the uh, the anti-cheat software, games like Valorant, for example, um, you just can't play those on Linux. And for some people, that's a deal breaker. For me, it's not because I play mostly single player, first person type games, story based games, and I don't do competitive shooters very much. So it's not a big deal for me. But by dual booting, it means that if on occasion I do want to play a game that I'm having issues with, I can do it. So so why not? And um, I found the instructions with Baz out were quite, quite simple and straightforward to follow. So um, I don't want to go on for too long because I think it was quite obvious that the situation with NVIDIA on Linux is not good, but the situation with AMD on Linux is very good. And it's given me a lot of food for thought. It's given me a lot of uh, ideas for future content. There's a lot of really interesting stuff coming up, like NT Sync for Linux. Uh, that could have very significant uh, um, improvements in gaming performance on Linux, you know, for that Windows translation and so on, uh, all of those, uh, and Proton and so on, all, all these things are being improved all the time, especially with the, the impetus of uh, Valve behind all this stuff as well with the Steam Deck. So um, so um, I'm going to leave it there. Do do please consider subscribing. There's a lot more interesting content to come up. Um, my main focus on this channel is Linux and Linux gaming, though I will cover other stuff, whether it's uh, Windows gaming, whether it's uh, AI, robotics, there's, there's loads of stuff I'll be covering because I have a, a background in a lot of stuff. So anyway, I'm going to leave it there and I hope you will join me in the next video and I hope to see you soon.